and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So that Satan is not the prison guard. He's not the, the Philippian jailer. He, he's just a guard. He, he's someone who works for uh, the, the lords of the city of Philippi. Satan, being the king of Babylon, he just gives orders and others keep the captives within. Being Pharaoh, seated upon his throne, he has plenty of Egyptian men to keep those slaves at bay, cruel taskmasters. So he, he works through many ways and many means. But ultimately, every sinner is captive to sin and read Proverbs 5 towards the end where it talks about being bound, wrapped about with the cords of your own iniquity. Your own sin, nobody else's, is what, is what keeps you fast in the stocks. And, and we're captive to sin and to Satan. All of God's elect are prior to salvation. None of God's elect are now. Not one. Everybody's free. Every last one of God's elect are free right now. That's why you leave Babylon. That's why you can go out of Egypt. And that's why there's a jubilee. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And every single one is now free. And we were saying that prior to May 21. God intends to save all of his elect before Judgment Day. And he did. And we were, we were so focused on the door shutting. The door, the heaven. The door of the ark. Remember, it was the 17th day of the second month. That we kept thinking, that door shutting. And I remember warning people, being out that night, May 20th. Tonight, tonight in a few hours, the door to heaven's going to shut. And it did. But we missed something or we didn't focus enough on it. And that was the opening of the door. Big time. Let's go back to Acts 16 and read a little bit more there. Verse 25, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, like all the world heard about May 21. And, and by the way, if uh, this prison is full of sinners, or it's representing that. It's, of course, they were sinners that are in prison. So, yeah, there's full of sinners too. But what's Paul and Silas doing there? Well, look, just quickly look at Hebrews 13 and um, verse 3. Remember them that are in bonds is bound with them. So this, this was... Um, uh, information that God was giving his people. When you bring the gospel, remember them that are in bonds, that is, spiritually in, in their sin, as though you yourself are bound. And, and the, that is, we're not to think we're any better than anybody else. We've sinned like everyone else. And, and so in that sense, here they are, bound with them. And actually, many people who were sharing the message of of Judgment Day, they didn't know if they were saved or not. They, they freely admitted, hey, I, I might be in my sin, basically saying I might be in prison spiritually. And, um, and it goes on here in verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, megas seismos, same two words as in Revelation 6 and Revelation 16. Megas Seismos, great earthquake. God, you know, we God doesn't string words together like that casually or throw them around. Now look at the elements we have here. We have a prison, which the Bible tells us is, is where mankind is. We have um, things happening towards midnight. As midnight represents Judgment Day, we have a great earthquake that identifies with May 21 because Revelation 6 ties it in. 
the great earthquake and the darkening of the sun and the moon and the stars and all that links it, as Matthew 24, 29 says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and so forth. So the great earthquake and the darkening spiritually, the sun, moon, and stars, it was all spiritual, happened almost at the same time or at the same time. And, and so uh, I, I know you're, somebody's saying, just read the verse, uh, finish the verse. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed, 100%. All the prisoners in their prisons, all their, all their bands, shackles, fetters, like they hurt Joseph's feet with fetters. However they were secured in that prison, Paul and Silas in the inner prison, it was all open, all sprung free. You know, a great earthquake occurred, and I didn't read about the city of Philippi being destroyed. I don't see it there. I don't even read that the prison walls fell down. You would think if there was a mega seismos, a great earthquake, as Revelation 16 says, so great, so mighty, the world has never seen it before, that it would have done some damage. And the only thing, it was like isolated to a prison, and more than that, specifically located towards locks, towards mechanisms that kept people bound. That's all it did. The only thing it did, except it also had some aftershocks or after effects with the Philippian jailer and his family. What happened to him? Well, we don't have time. But he came trembling, and think about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. As a result of the earthquake and as a result of the prisoners not leaving. <laughs> as a result, we could say of the rapture, God will feed his sheep who are typified by the Philippian jailer and his family, and they will come trembling to God and be blessed. It, it, the, remember, when the jailer came running out, if the prison cells were empty, he would have killed himself. So, in a sense, I don't know if we can tie that in, but if there were a rapture, it would have had ill effects, let's say, for those like this man. But I, I don't think we can make that connection, but it, it's interesting. Now, this, wow, it opens up the Bible. You know, I, I'm really not just saying this. Um, I, I, I've been following Family Radio's teaching for a lot of years. And in the past, when I've gone out and in front on a couple of things, it wasn't too long. And then uh, later, Mr. Camping would do a study, and I'd be corrected. So I'm used, very used to being corrected that it, it, I can't believe that, that God is opening up the Scriptures again in a, in a wonderful way um, that he's showing us certain things. I'm just going to uh, mention them, and then, and then we'll close. And that is May 21 was Judgment Day. No question. No question at all. Spiritually, it was judgment on the world because the door of salvation shut. There's no more salvation for anyone who did not become saved prior to May 21. They wouldn't be God's elect anyway. And second, a great earthquake did occur on May 21 that was designed by God to open up the prison of all sinners, and he released them. They may not know it, and that's why we keep praying. And it could be people in our family, our neighbors, it could be anybody, and they might be acting, yeah, very worldly, and like somebody you never think was um, saved. But God saved them all, he delivered them all, and they're all free even though they don't know it. And that could be a process, as we know in our own lives. And 
course, this process will be, you know, will have to be speeded up. <laughs> we don't have too much time left. Uh, the, the other thing is um, Satan. Since it, it, it's, a, it's a very important thing. When we read about the 70-year captivity, the 70-year period, what God says concerning the king of Babylon in Jeremiah 25, he says in uh, verse 11, this whole land shall be a desolation and astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years, which identifies with May 21, the, the end of the, the 70 years. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished, and you can read May 21 there, the end of the great tribulation, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith Jehovah, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans will make it perpetual desolations. That's now. The king of Babylon, Babylon's fallen. When you, when you um, investigate that statement that's made two or three times, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, like Revelation 18. That happens at the fall of Babylon after 70 years, which identifies with the end of the Great Tribulation. And the Great Tribulation is past. It's over. It's done. Babylon is fallen. The king of Babylon is being punished. And Lord willing, we'll talk about that. A little bit. I don't understand everything that that involves, but I do know that Satan was exalted because God gave him official rule in the churches and in the world to a large degree, but especially in the churches, 100%. He was his servant to bring judgment upon them. And on May 21, the judgment on the churches was complete and it transitioned to the judgment on the world where we're now at. And, and the church is just part of the world. They're still under judgment along with the world. But Satan's usefulness came to an end. It came to an end. And God's no longer calling him his servant. He has brought him down quite a number of pegs. Actually, the Bible says he's brought him down to the grave. He's brought him down to hell. And he's not buried. He's He's being shamed. His body is being exposed, it, it, we read in Isaiah 14. But um, j just a couple of other things um, that the day we're living in teaches us, and that is we should stop weeping right now, immediately. You don't, when you're freed from Egypt, you don't cry about it. When you come out of Babylonian captivity, you don't mourn over it. When you're a bondman for years and years to, to uh, someone, and it's a year of jubilee, well, <laughs> you're glad. You rejoice. You praise God. And that's the language of the jubilee. It's the language of the Feast of Tabernacles, which we're observing. God says, rejoice in your feast again and again. Be glad. We go towards October 21 like Jehoshaphat and his army, singing and praising God, rejoicing. No more weeping, which also has a spiritual meaning. If we're not to weep, we're not to bring the gospel. Right? Uh, I'm sorry. One last thing. In Psalm 126, and then we'll close. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I'm running a little long, but Psalm 126, verse 1, when Jehovah turned again the captivity of Zion, that would be the true believers, we were like them that dreamed, and turning the captivity has to do with the end of 70 years, then was our mouth filled with laughter, there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, now's the time to laugh. And our tongue with singing, then said they among the heathen, Jehovah has done great things for them. Jehovah has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Jehovah, the streams in the south. 
They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. 